All right, what is up, everybody? This is Zach Zacharias. We are back with a new Let's Play. This time I am bringing you Avedon 3, The Warborn. I have already covered the first Avedon, as well as Avedon 2, The Corruption. And now we're going to get right into Avedon 3, The Warborn. I really enjoyed the first two Avedon games, so I really cannot wait to get into uh, this one with you all. So without further ado, let's just get started. Now, if you remember in my playthrough of the first Avedon, I went with the Blade Master. His name was Xander. We had a lot of fun with him. And then the second Avedon, I stuck with a Tinker Mage named Malik. Because I really like the idea of using someone who has a great mechanical skill. And that was pretty fun. Although for my Let's Play, I think I'm going to go right back to being a Blade Master. Because I like the tankiness of a Blade Master and all that. And I think for my this late uh this playthrough, I'm gonna go with the female blade master called Ray Lynn. Just for a little bit more variety in my character. So yes, the first Avedon game was about a blade master named Xander. The second one was about a blade mas master named Malik. And this game will be about a blade master named Ray Lynn. So yes, we're back to being a blade master, but uh, there were a couple of reasons why I wanted to go back to being a Blade Master. And one of them is uh, the fact that I do like uh, the tankiness of the Blade Master more and being a natural leader. Even though a Tinker Mage was fun, I felt like I did have to... It did confuse me at times going back and forth. That's why I constantly took the Blade Master companion with me. And there's another reason why, but I won't get into that quite yet. But yes, for this playthrough... For this story of Avedon 3 The Warborn, we are going to run a Blade Master named Ray Lynn. And one more thing I will say before we get right into the story is uh, this is the last of the Avedon series. So I'm pretty set on what kind of path and choices I will make. But feel free to do whatever since it is the last in the series. But I did try to follow the canon as best as I could in the first two games. So this one, you just do whatever choices you want, pretty much. And I'm not sure in the second game I follow the canon exactly to a T. I mean, there might be inconsistencies, but for the most part, I think we're fine there. But yes, my story here is going to be about a Blade Master named Ray Lynn. So let's go ahead and get right to it. I always play games on normal, at least for Let's Plays. You are a Hand of Abaddon, a mighty warrior, trusted to defend the pack, the Pact is an alliance of five nations, banded together for safety. The Far Lands, enemies of the Pact, surround it on all sides. These are nations of barbarians, raiders, titans. Faded, jealous empires, all waiting for a sign of weakness. The Pact had one purpose, survival, by crushing the Far Lands and keeping them weak and divided. This alliance functioned for centuries. Then the Age of Chaos began. The Far Lands banded together and attacked in unison pouring over the border and inflicting enormous devastation. For three years, you have fought to help hold back the hordes. Armies have fallen, cities have burned. Once the pact being this week would be unthinkable, the pact had a protector, determined to root out those who would weaken it. Abaddon, the Black Fortress. Warriors of Abaddon, such as you, watched over the five nations of the pact. When anyone acted to harm the peace and tranquility of the pact, Abaddon destroyed them. Its power was without limit. Its word was law. Abaddon has watched over the pack for three centuries. Its warriors wield the finest weapons. Its wizards are allowed to learn the most powerful spells. And the keeper of the Black Fortress, Redbeard, directed them all. Then Abaddon was nearly destroyed in a surprise attack. Its warriors were hunted down. Redbeard was driven out. Without Abaddon's guidance and protection, the pack struggles to stay strong and unified. You're one of the few fighting to help Abaddon survive. You are a hand of Abaddon, a warrior and enforcer. Your authority is almost without limit. Your ward is law. You are in one of the most violent lands. You are on the border with Camaria, one of the far lands, full of stone fortresses and brutal warriors. You hunt the hostile Camarians as best you can, without reinforcements, supplies, or guidance from Abaddon. You have just woken up in your quarters. You are stationed in Camp Nightshade, one of the Abaddon's few remaining small fortresses, on the border with the enemy Farlands. 
You are bruised and exhausted from constant patrols and skirmishes, but rest is unlikely. It is time to rise and receive your orders for the day, risking all to hold back the unending waves of invaders. Okay. So yes, here we are, started with Ray Lynn. Now the skill tree is a little bit different than it was in the uh, last game as far as overall design goes, but the the notes are pretty much still all the same. You have your battle specialization, your utility, and your efficiency. And you've got your trees to take. Uh, battle skills, utility, and efficiency. I think for my playthrough, I'm going to go ahead and stick with the utility skills for Raylan. So making sure we, of course, raise the uh, basic skills first. So yeah, by now you should have an idea of how these all work, pretty much. You roll out of bed, ready for another day of war. As a hand, you have a lot of freedom. You can scout, you can grab some soldiers and raid a Camarian settlement. You can even check in with your commander and see if she has guidance for you. You haven't received orders, let alone supplies or reinforcements from Avedon in months. Your job is to do all you can with what little you have. As you wake up and your vision unblurs, you see that someone left something for you in the night. It's a rare, pleasant surprise. Someone finally brought you the new cloak you've been trying to get. It is waiting for you on the table to the north. It's an awkward fit, but the cloak will prepare you for a harsh Camarian winter. Time to go out and look for something to do. Yes, nobody is watching you now, but one day you may have to answer to Avedon for your actions, or lack of them. To open the door, search a box, or use any other object, select it. And one reason why I wanted to run a female Blade Master, not only for variety, but also because the female Blade Master portrait kind of makes me think of Emma Watson, <laughs> in a way, which I think is pretty funny. Surprisingly, more supplies have been left for you. A flask since sits on a nearby table. The shape of the flask identifies it as one of Han Sazi's uh, healing brews. Two pieces of new equipment in one day? Unheard of. There is a storeroom to the east. It's been mostly empty for months. Who knows? Maybe something handy has appeared there overnight. Get the potion. Once it's in your pack, you can press the star button next to it to use it. You can use scrolls and lamps in the same way. Missile weapons for you to equip are in the next room. Okay, so let's get a potion of health. I don't really need any of these items except for the short bow. I like we just have a tunic and some pants on for armor so far. But we will hang on to these since I know who exactly w can use them. Okay, yeah. As you emerge into the chilly morning, you see Torch hobble towards you. You don't know his real name. Since you arrived in Camp Nightshade, everyone's only ever called him Torch. He's not a Hand of Abaddon, just a pack soldier assigned to defend this Abaddon outpost. He's been here for a long time, and he has the scars to show it. He's too old and damaged to be sent out on most patrols. He, he's usually here at home, helping out. He waves to you as you approach. Hey, oh, Ray Lynn, just coming out with the news of the day. Actual surprise today. A surprise? Actual news from Abaddon? Torch laughs. No, not that much of a surprise. Still nothing from our masters. It's just that Commander Cerise wishes to give you your guidance in person today. Is that bad news? Not for me, he laughs. I just try to keep the commander from noticing me. It's how I'm still alive instead of just broken down. I should be going then. Torch turns slowly, wincing when his weight lands on his right leg. Ah, old wounds are hurting. You move on ahead, I'll hobble behind. I'll, I'm sure you want to hurry and get your guidance. You now have a quest to find the commander and get your first mission. Your destination will be marked on the map. 
by the way, why do they call you Torch? He seems saddened by the question. Camarian village attack pack travelers a decade back. I was part of a, the punishment team. Went to the village. Pretty poor there. Their buildings were mostly wood. I had to get their attention. Got my nickname because of that. He shakes his head. Hope you have a better day than that. Have to go. He hobbles off. Okay, I am going to do some exploring before I uh, go see the commander. Hmm. Okay, the shield actually has value, so we're going to stick that in our junk bag instead. One thing I might actually... Ooh, this is a button? I didn't realize that. Okay, we are going to make sure we... Okay, this just takes us right back to the room we're in. Bro, lightning. Nah, I'd rather sell stuff. Unless it does like a bunch of damage, I don't really care to use it. But it looks... Like that's all in the room we have. You chat with Torch a little. He fills you in on the gossip in the fort. You tell him what's going on outside. Soldiers in Camp Nightshade le need to kill a lot of time. Oh, his portrait somehow disappeared from that. Okay, so we have another locked door. Potion of Battle. It's interesting that that's a Potion of Battle now when that was a, an Elixir of Vitality in the uh, last two games. Man, that's going to be confusing if I, unless I see all the potion, different potions there are. Okay, so I can't enter those doors. You know, now that I think about it, I might as well just go ahead and get my uh, quest rather than explore everything. I can always explore everything about this fort later. You pass the stream and approach the main entrance of Camp Nightshade. As usual, it is quiet, underpopulated, and intense. Your camp has much terrain to control and few resources to do it. It's a pretty serious place. You take your familiar walk to the commander's office to get your guidance. Most of its facilities are burrowed into the walls of this remote ravine. The commander is in the moldy worn to the southwest. All right, commander's office. As part of your routine, you approach the desk of Commander Cerise. Like most of the warriors here, she is a soldier of the pack, not a full hand of Abaddon. Wounds from past battles limit her ability to stay stray far from the camp. As you approach, she is making notes on a scroll with her right hand. Her left hand was burned into a claw by a spell years before. Though this has not hampered her leadership skills or her ability to cast powerful magic herself. She consults her scroll as you approach. Ah, Ray Lynn. Yes, I have guidance for you. Urgent. Unusual. He seems even more nervous than usual today. You seem ill at ease. Therese leans back into her chair and, and into her seat, sighs, and looks across at you. It is difficult to command a fort when all of you hands are not under my command. You are above the law. My law. But that is not why I am nervous. Something is going on. What is happening? I am getting messages from Avedon. New hands are coming. I am getting orders. I am warning you. You should be prepared for action. Commander Cerise smiles and tries to seem at ease, but even the most hardened soldier fears a hand of Abaddon. What is it, Raylin? Do you need help with your guidance? The corner of her mouth twitches slightly. I'd like to know more about you. I am a mage from the Kellum. I joined the army to protect the pack. I was good at my job. Redbeard heard of me. He decided that I would serve here. Be useful. Useful? How? He looks at her ruined hand. Sometimes I fight. 
Mostly, I create a base for you so you don't have to worry about the petty details of life. Then you can go out and do your harsh work. I also give guidance when there are no fresh orders from Abaddon. Why did you not become a hand? She doesn't need to think about it. I wasn't willing to take on the responsibility. I like the comfort of getting orders. I don't want to make all the grim choices hands have to. How do you do you decide what guidance to give? Abaddon wants the pack to be strong and stable. I do too. I look around and see what would make Abaddon stronger. Then I make suggestions. Guidance. What would happen if I didn't follow your guidance? Nothing, I suppose. You are a hand of Abaddon. Your word is law, as they always say. She sounds tired. She's given this little speech to many hands before you. However, I am here because the Keeper of Abaddon trusts me. If you ignore my advice and something goes wrong, you have to answer to your harsh master. I find this provides the hands great motivation to respect me. What guidance do you have for me today? Three, three shutters. Serious guidance. The sort it might be unwise to neglect. The gaze of Abaddon is on us. We have received word from the Black Fortress. Two new hands have arrived. You have an actual message from Abaddon? Yes, for the first time in months. Me, I am nervous. You, you should be afraid. Who are the new hands? Their names are Nathalie and Botan. They are in the hand camp. This is a short walk to the east. I have barely spoken to them. They are as agitated as I am. They asked me to send you to speak with them before I give you more guidance. Please do so. I don't want any angry hands. I think you will be working together. Abaddon has begun to take a new interest in lowly Camp Nightshade. Commander Cerise has received orders from the Black Fortress, and she needs your help. Two new hands have arrived from Abaddon. Their names are Nat Nathalie and Botan, and they are in the hand camp. Go over there and meet them. Hmm, one of those names sounds quite familiar, don't it? Book. This book is about Linnaeus. Linnaeus is the name given to all of the known lands, it's surrounded by endless sea. The history of Linnaeus is, his, is the history of all living things. Nothing lies past the shore but ocean. Well, actually, there are legends of lands beyond the sea. Centuries ago, supposedly, some brave mariners departed and returned, bearing proof of other lands far beyond. But that was long ago, and any such evidence is lost, if it ever existed, which it almost assuredly didn't. There are other tales of mad mariners who tried to discover lands across the sea. They have never returned. The dominant power in Linnaeus is the Midlands Pact, more commonly known as the Pact. These five nations are located in the center of the continent. They stand united against the Farlands, the many small squabbling powers that occupy the outer peninsulas of Linnaeus. The Farlands are the small states and regions on the outer peninsulas and islands of Linnaeus. They are the old foes of, and now dominated by, the Midlands Pact. They are spread out around the edges of the known world. They are not normally allies. The main thing they had in common were merry years of raiding and harassing the nations of the Pact. This changed rapidly when the Age of Chaos began. Some of these Farlands are actual, recognizable political entities, like the loose aggregation of tribes that formed Survargald or the pitiful shreds of the Taiwan Empire. Other far lands are true barbarian territories, like the Titan Peaks or the Wretch Lands, harsh wild territories, occupied by monsters and savages that are not worth the effort to tame them. Tame them. And then there is the corruption, which is almost too bizarre for description. One of the primary reasons for the pact to exist at all is to provide a united, brutal front against the far lands. It worked well until the Age of Chaos began. Before the Great War began, the Pact ruled Linnaeus based on two principles, open arms within and the stone wall beyond. Okay, so we are getting a little filler early. Pretty funny how I found, find a fine cloak immediately after the tutorial had me put on this basic one. Soldiers in Camp Nightshade are very busy, and thus they need the maximum maximize their relaxation time. That's why they commandeered the storeroom and made a steam room out of it. You've spent a lot of hours in here. Alas, right now, you don't have the time.
All right, let's go ahead and meet two hands then. Okay, so far nothing too much yet. This is the hand encampment. Every Abaddon camp has one. This is where visiting hands rest, prepare their gear, and wait for new work. When outsiders want to hire hands to do whatever, it's good to have them in one place. It's been pretty empty for the last year. That's why you were surprised to see new hands here. A sorceress and a shadow walker. They are both absorbed in their work. Ooh, what is this down here? Alright, we got chainmail. Another razor disc. We can sell that. I actually know. That can go on in a future companion. Short swords. Short sword, I mean. You know, now that I have given it some thought, I might actually... I'll stick with an iron short sword for now, but I might actually switch to spears for my playthrough here. Spears for all my characters, just to offer a little bit more variety. But I will stick with an iron short sword for now, since it is the strongest weapon. All right, let's talk to him. You meet another hand of Abaddon. This young Shadow Walker sits cross-legged by the fire, sharpening his sword. He is still dirty from the road. He is very young. You were older when you began your training than he is now, but he already has the calm, tired demeanor of an experienced campaigner. In the age of chaos, when war has spread to every corner of the known lands, soldiers get jaded fast. He looks up at you and frowns. I don't know you, but you are a hand. Are you Ray Lynn? You nod. I am Botan. Commander Cerise told me to find you. Cerise said you would come. He sets his blade to the side and motions for you to sit. He takes a sip of ale from one of the nearby bottles and motions, motions for you to join him if you wish. She has given me her guidance. You may choose me or Nathalie for, to help. He nods at a sorceress sitting by a nearby fire. This work will be a refreshing change. What do you think of her guidance? She is not a hand. We don't have to do what she says. However, I would, will happily take her advice if I think it is wise. Right now, it is wise. Opening up that laboratory might be a very wise idea. He doesn't elaborate. Why is it a refreshing change? I would prefer to spend some time killing things that aren't begging me for mercy. It is more peaceful. You are a hand of Abaddon? I am. Trained and tested in the field. How long have you been a hand? He confidently meets your gaze. Not long. A little less than two years. I came to Abaddon after Redbeard was thrown out. Acting Keeper Protus selected me himself. Do not let my age concern you. I am fully trained and tested in the field. Where have you served? Everywhere. I was based in Abaddon, and Keeper Protus used portals to send me wherever assassination was required. I worked very hard. Then I, then I was granted a brief rest period. Then I was diverted. Diverted? I had completed a mission, and my commander told me to come here. I'm not sure why. I am here now and eager to help. Botan sits by the fire and cleans his weapons. I am still here if you need my help. The Reese has pests she needs killed. What can you do for me? I am a shadow walker. I use my tools and weapons in battle. I am trained as an assassin. I slip in and kill quickly. If trapped, I escape and strike from smoke and shadows. Botan lifts his uh, tunic. He wears armor underneath it. I do not shrink from a fight. However, I can't withstand direct battle as well as the Blade Masters can. If Cerise offers you my aid and you wish it, please come tell me. That is all I need for now. All right, I suspect I will be that I will be stationed here for some time. I think we will have time to speak later. For now, I sense that things are about to become very hectic. Before you can ask him to elaborate, he grabs a razor disc and sharpening stone and returns to work. Okay, that, so that's our Shadow Walker companion. Can we equip him right now? Oh snap, he already has an iron short sword, okay. I probably will still equip the Shadow Walker with the spear anyway. Just because, but... You know, it still wouldn't hurt. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to have an iron short sword, like, immediately for him.
here I am just taking all the stuff of value for money later. You meet one of the two hands who have just arrived at Camp Nightshade. She is a Kellum mage. She is only slightly older than you, but she seems much older. Part of this is because of her wounds. She moves as if she has been in many battles. Her left arm bears a savage burn, very similar to the one Commander Cerise has. She points at the chair opposite from you. She looks at you when you sit, but she seems barely but she barely seems interested. Hello, are you the hand I will be helping? Sorry, I've been passed around to so many hands, you see. Let's make the introductions. I am Nathalie. So yes, one of our companions is indeed Nathalie. Jeff decided to reprise her for this game. Uh, Commander Cerise told me to find you. Then you are, Ray Lynn. Cerise told me about you. She seems competent. She is also a, she is also tormented by a wound like mine. I can sympathize. Anyway, I am Nathalie. I'm a sorceress. I have a lot of, of experience. If you need my help, I am here. How did you burn your hand? Fighting a drake, a clever one, which trapped me with a spell. It's a long story, happened years ago. It's a very common wound for sorcerers in war, though. She holds out her hands before her. We always fight like this. Makes sense. Yes. Anyway, what do you want? You are a hand of Abaddon? I am. I have been since well before the Age of Chaos. I've even served Redbeard directly. My record is strong. I do very well with what little I am allowed. How long have you been a hand? I was accepted into the service of Abaddon in 6312. That means she became a hand when still in her mid-teens. Extremely young. As if she senses your thoughts, she says, I showed a lot of promise when I was very young. Don't worry, nobody thinks I have great potential anymore. Where have you served? I have been in every state of the pact in every far land. When I was in Abaddon, they looked for any excuse to send me out again. I was training some recruits in Hoklanda when I was told to come here. Who told you to come? The order was unsigned. It bore the seal of Abaddon. It told me to come here immediately. I did not question it. The training was boring me, so I, so I was eager to leave. Nathalie sits at the table, taking notes and reading scrolls. She barely looks up as she speaks with you. Yes? What can you do for me? I can summon searing flames or cloud the minds of our foes. However, I function best at a distance. If some big warrior types aren't keeping the enemy away, you will find that I won't be very useful because I will be dead. Okay, that's, that's, that's one way to put it. Uh, th that is all I need for now. Nathalie nods. I will resume my studies. These scrolls are all I am allowed, so I will do what I can with them. The two new hands are in your roster. You can change their inventory when you're in Abaddon, when you're in an Abaddon base. Now that you have spoken with them, you can return to Commander Cerise. Okay. It is pretty cool that uh, Jeff decided to reprise Nathalie as one of the companions for this. Although by this point, I think she should at least be like an Archmage or some, or got promoted higher up. But then again, it kind of makes sense, too, why she would be still uh, a hand, because she was pretty wild and ambitious when we met her in the first Abaddon. I've spoken to Napoli and Botan. Reese Nas, thank you. I appreciate the effort. Now then, the message from Abaddon was fairly simple. They want something. It seems like a simple thing, but that does not reassure me. What does Abaddon want? They asked me to make sure er, that our magical workshop is open and cleaned out. It currently is not. This is Abaddon's fort, so I'd rather send hands in there. Might be secrets, after all. I will have it unlocked for you. If you want to go, want to please your true masters, I would go in there and clear out any stray pests still alive in there. We have a magical workshop? Of course. All Abaddon outposts have them. It's been sealed up for a few years, but I've always known it would be, need to be, clean, to be cleaned up eventually. Why was it sealed up? One of Abaddon's eyes went in there about 10 years ago to do some experiment or other. There was an explosion, then screams, then monsters. You know how those things go. Redbeard's protocols were very clear in that case. We sealed it up. Now it has been unsealed. Can I keep anything I find? Three shrugs. Why not? It's your fort. Can anyone help me? Botan and Napoli are at your disposal. They don't have much to do. One of them can help you clean the place out. When you enter the workshop, you will be allowed to form your party. You can choose who will accompany you then.
Okay, so here are the attributes real quick. Main skill for Blade Masters. Dexterity is still good too. Obviously, strength is going to be our primary focus, but we are going to work on dexterity and endurance as well. Valuable skill for our characters. Intelligence is not going to be a focus at all for Blade for my Blade Master and also for my companion. But obviously, it will be for my companion sorceress. So. But yeah, I think naturally, with all the adventures we took in the first game, should already be advanced in her skills, but I digress. <laughs> that is one of those things we'll just have to suspend disbelief on. You are allowed to take one ally with you on this mission. Select someone to fight by your side. Alright, we are going to take Botan with us for this one then. You enter the workshop for the first time. A proper magical laboratory is an expensive, required component for all proper Avedon outposts. This one, alas, is kind of in ruins. You, you've only heard rumors of what, what, what went wrong. It happened over 10 years ago. Involved in the hands, exuberant experiment gone wrong and resulted in something unpleasant nobody wants to talk about. The air is still silent and icy cold. The place seems unoccupied. This job might be easy. When you, you are about to be attacked by a few pests, when they approach you, the game will enter combat mode and you will learn how to fight. There are old frost rhymed bones on the floor in the hall to the north. Human bones. This is already unnerving. Some of the bones start to move. They rise slowly from the floor and lurch towards you. You are relieved to know that your time isn't being wasted. These workshops were sealed up for a good reason. To attack a foe, select the space it is standing in. Obviously, Dexterity is going to be a primary focus for my warrior, for my Shadow Walker here. I really should have been referring to my convenience by their names rather than just, you know, my Shadow Walker and all this other stuff. But oh well. The presence of undead is a clear indication that some sort of dangerous magic is in place. Your job now is to find the source and remove it. It's probably a good idea to save the game. Press the disk button or type Control s to access the save game window. You can also press F3 to make you a quick save file and press F4 to load your quick save file. Finally, Avedon 3 will occasionally make a backup save game for you. It will be called Auto Save on the load game window. Okay, well, we're not going to save right now. Okay, can't get in there for some reason. Like I said, I think for my playthrough, I'm going to have all my characters just wield two-handed weapons rather than my warriors were wield like a sword and shield. Because I do want high damage output. When you are next to a foe and then move away, your enemy will stop your movement. You will only be able to move one space for the rest of the turn. If you need to end your turn early, you can do this by pressing the space bar or clicking on your active character. You hear squeaking and scuttling nearby. The sounds of smashing bone have drawn other predators out of the ruins. You have a variety of abilities that can help to defeat your foes. Why not try one out? Press this button or type A to use an ability. Select, a, select the ability you wish to use. Press this button to deliver a powerful blow, then select the target to attack. When you use an ability, you won't be able to use it again for several turns. When you select an enemy, you will attack it with your current weapon. Press this button to attack with your melee weapon. Or press this button to use your missile weapon. You can also press W to switch. Try it now. So yeah, I like using a, a sword and shield combo for more defense, but I feel like I will get more damage if I have all of them just wielding uh, two-handed weapons, especially since uh, my Blade Master has regeneration ability anyway.
Okay, so we don't have really have anything in here we can use. Abaddon's training is thorough. As soon as you saw the skeletons, you knew that there must be some nearby magic fueling them. You found it. In the middle of this magic circle, there is a withered, frozen body. A shade floats over it. When you get close, the insubstantial figure turns to look at you. It seems perplexed. Ah, my experiment. It is failing. You have disrupted it. So long, and I fail. I am angry. Volcan already has his hand on his blade. At least we aren't killing someone alive, he mutters. I was sent to evict you. Nothing personal. You try to attack a hand of Abaddon? Now you pay the plot price for your foolishness. Okay, what abilities is Botan? Oh, Mighty Blow. Healing Focus. Yeah. Your attack passes through the shade, tearing and disrupting the delicate tissue of magic that holds it together. The shade wavers angrily. You fool! I lied! My experiment was a success! Now you face the full might of my powerful wrath. There are several cauldrons nearby, full of bubbling goop. The slime begins to steam and hiss. Gross figures rise from it. Okay, whatever, show off. Okay, so we ran an action point before we landed this on him. But we can do that on him anyway. Your final attack tears the shade in two. It howls and fades away. All that is left are a few disgusting bodies. Another job for Camp Nightshade's custodial crew. You can report back to Cerise. The camp now has a workable workshop. You wonder why it was suddenly needed. Skin gloves, we can put that on uh, Napoli. Okay, nothing else on him. Ooh, we have a runestone in here. Okay. We just have to go back out the way we came, pretty much. Oh, nice, and Napoli already has a bow equipped. I wonder if we should just go ahead and put these in the, uh... Because I wonder if my other companions will come equipped with the default stuff. Even though, uh... Ray Lynn had to gather weapons. The pets in the workshop are dead. You tell Cerise the tale of your brief adventure. She nods, but she is more nervous than before. Good. Things are moving very quickly. While you were inside, two more envoys from Avedon came. She points at a scroll on her desk. It bears a wax seal of Avedon, still unopened. That arrived with the envoys. I dread opening it. While I prepare, I have more guidance for you. You have more guidance for me? There are new visitors from Avedon. One is a hand, a woman named Kalita. The other is an eye, an old sage named Nicodemus. Somewhat disconnected. All he wanted was to make sure the magical workshop was free of monsters. They asked all, to meet all the hands in the camp. I need a moment to think. Please go see them. What was in that scroll from Avedon? I have not yet opened it. I suspect, once I do, my life will be very different. I will read it soon. Where is Kalita? And the camp outside where you met Nathalie and Botan. Her temper is short and her journey has been long. Also, 
She seems confused. Just warning you. Where is Nicodemus? He is old and tired from the road, and he only wanted only to begin to set up shop in the magical workshop. The one you, one you just disinfected. You will probably find him there. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and level that up then. And we are going to level these two basic skills up first. And I think I still do like uh, the battle skills on the Shadow Walker the best over the utility stuff, so I will stick with those. Yep, another familiar face, if it wasn't obvious already. A lot of hands are suddenly showing up at Camp Nightshade. Most of them are young, but this Blade Master is an old campaigner. Her face is starting to show wrinkles, and her hair is tinted with gray. She isn't polishing her armor or tending to her weapons. They're piled on the ground near her, adequate but not immaculate. She sits there, sips from a mug, and reads a book. Her eyes flick up to you when you approach. You're Ray Lynn, right? The new shining face. I'm Kalita, trained blade master of the Kava, Hand of Avedon. Here if you need me. She looks back at her book. Commander Cerise told me to come see you. Cerise. Her face is blank for a moment. Oh, yes, Cerise. I talked to her. She told me she had a hand who still had a little energy left. Must be you. I can help you on your mission, whatever it is. If you have any questions about me, ask away. I'm used to the routine. You have served Avedon for a long time. Ten years. That little? Service of Avedon has aged her terribly. Fighting foes of the pack. Missions. So on. She looks down at her book, sighs, and looks back up at you. Though I've had a checkered past, I won't hide it. You'll hear the gossip, so I'll tell you now. A checkered past? I spent a year in... She stops talking. She sits perfectly still for several seconds. Then she continues as if nothing happened. I was in the dungeons of Abaddon. The dungeons? Why? I don't talk about it. It upsets me. Makes me angry. Then I... I... I was talking about the dungeons. I don't like to do that. All you need to know is that I was cleared by Redbeard himself. But you still serve Abaddon. I am a loyal hand of Abaddon. I will fight effectively for you. That's all you need to know. Now tell me about your skills. She pats her steel armor. There is a satisfying clanging sound. Blade masters are shock troops. Pillars of steel. We stop the foe and keep them stopped. We protect the archers and tinker mages and other tricksters. I use sword or spear, and I'm good at it. Glad to meet you. Kalita nods. W when you go wherever Cerise decides to send you, I'll be available. When you leave the gates of the camp, you will be asked which companion companions you want to take with you. When you re-enter re the camp, your companions will have returned to the camps, to their camps. I'd like to know more about your service. My service? I've been a hand for over ten years. I took the same oath you did, to serve the Keeper and the Pack. No matter what you hear from the others, I have always been a loyal servant. They don't talk to me, but that's their choice. Why don't they talk to you? Because I was thrown into the... She is silent for a long moment. Wait, was I remembering? Sometimes I get lost when I try to remember. I was in the Avedon dungeons. Wrongly. Are you sure you are alright? Of course, I only get a little lost when I try to remember the far path. Don't worry. Once I am on a mission, focusing on the present, I am fully effective. What happened in the dungeons? I... Damaged. I was damaged. Her face starts to sweat. It is not a... Gentle place. They're wrongly... Release. Don't like talking about it. Ask about something else. Let's talk about how Avedon is now. Now, Avedon is barely useful. It is weak. Weaker than it has ever been. Completely useless. Were it not for this pathetic little band, she waves at the other hands. We don't. We do not even have a leader. Redbeard and Acting Keeper Protus both claim the title. One wanders the wilderness, and the other hides in the tower. Why is Abaddon so weak? Abaddon has had the power to judge and kill people of the Pact for centuries, and the Pact hates it. I'm a living example of how Abaddon's power can be abused. 
When Abaddon was attacked and burned, the pack saw a chance to rid itself of its protectors. Alas for them, they are succeeding. Any opinions about Protus? I met him when he was still a heart. He seemed competent. His advice was sound. He was no hero, though. I'm amazed he found the courage to accept Redbeard's position when Redbeard was still alive. You think Protus is in danger? Seriously? Protus took power from Redbeard. Redbeard pretends to play along to be a good, loyal soldier, but I'm amazed Protus hasn't suffered a slow death yet. Who do you think should lead Abaddon? I don't know. I'm not even sure Abaddon should exist. The Black Fortress walked o watched over the pack for centuries, but I can't forget what was done to me. It is childish of me, but sometimes I wish the place would simply crumble to the ground. Lita is sitting by the fire in her accustomed pose, slowly drinking and reading her book. You notice that when she reads a few pages, she usually flips back and reads them again. She doesn't pay much attention to the people around you, but she grudgingly talks to you when she needs to. How's the war going? I don't really know. I try not to think about it. I don't have ideas. I follow orders and I have wise guidance. That gives me purpose. You have no ideas? None at all? After the things that happened to me, I am not good with ideas anymore. Making good ideas needs knowing the past well, and my past is lost and jumbled in my head. At least I have guidance. What guides you? I am of the Kava. Like all of my people, I have the stone code. We rely on it. Tell me about the stone code. I don't want to right now. Explaining such abstract things gives me headaches. If we are ever serving in the Kava, ask me then, since you will need to know. Okay, so... Alright, goodbye. Kalita nods and returns to her book. She finds that she has forgotten about what she is reading, swears soft, softly, and flips back ten pages. Okay, well, since she leveled up, we'll level this and this. I think for her, just to be different, I am going to keep Raylin on the path of the uh, utility skills, but whenever I do need to take Lita, I will do this path just for a little bit more variety. I don't think I will take Lita and Nathalie on missions too often since I already know them well. And this might be a case where Spiderweb just got simply tired of, uh, of, uh, writing, writing new hands. So that's why Kalita and, uh, Nathalie are reprised. So I might take the ones that are brand new with me instead. Clickety click. The laboratory is no longer filthy and abandoned. An old Dharama is puttering around, directing his constructs as they clean up his new workshop. He occasionally mutters, I should have assistance for this. Then he notices you. As he approaches, you get a good look at all of the little scars and pits on his arms and face, caused by countless misbehaving experiments. Combined with the dirt from the road, he looks pretty rough. He smiles and shakes your hand. I recognize you. You are Ray Lynn. Cerise described you to me. I thank you for cleaning out my workshop. I am Craftmaster Nicodemus, researcher and defender of Abaddon. I can help you, and you can help me too. Uh, when did you get here? I only just arrived. A long journey. Very difficult. Three of my best speakers were broken, and my clothes are filthy. But no matter, I am now here to serve. Long decades of overall useful experimentation are now at your service. Uh, why are you here? He starts to answer honestly, then he thinks better of it. Did I not say? I came to craft useful equipment for this camp. No other reason. Nothing unusual is happening. Nothing at all. Uh, Commander Cerise sent me to speak with you. So reassuring. War tears us apart. Carnage is everywhere. And yet, the flow of young hands needing training never ends. Let's see now. You look like you need your first scarab, and you perhaps have not learned to enchant your weapons and armor. Let's take care of that. First, enchantment. I'd rather hear about scarabs. Be patient. The pain of the first scarab insertion tends to fog the mind. I do that part last. Alright, tell me about enchantments. Nicodemus hands you a small stone. It is warm to the touch and glows slightly. There is an enchanted anvil in the next hall. Very fortunate. Most of Abaddon's camps are too humble to have one. 
If you crush that stone atop one of your weapons or pieces of armor, it will provide it with an enchantment. This is a very handy sort of magic. You can combine a weapon or piece of armor with a rune stone on an enchanted anvil. Each item can only be enchanted once. Different rune stones have different effects. What about scarabs? In one startlingly fast motion, Nicodemus removes something from his pouch and touches it to your chest. You wouldn't have thought the old man was so nimble. It is agonizingly painful. Yeah! Nicodemus pulls the items away. It tears some flesh away. As you mop up the blood, he shows you what it was. It's the scarab, worked of stone and metal, and one of his sharp little legs has du have dug into your chest. He hands you the scarab. There. I think that is everything Cerise wanted. Ah! What the hell? That is the scarab. A special and powerful bit of magic used only by the warriors of Abaddon. They burrow into your flesh and augment your strength. Painful, as you saw, but worth it. Placing and removing them requires great concentration. You will only be able to change them in one of Abaddon's camps. Each hand starts out, starts our being able to equip one scarab. As you gain experience, you will be able to use more scarabs. Is that all? I think so. You should be honored. This was advanced training, reserved for the most trusted hands, doing vital work out in reality. There is one more thing I can do for you. If you are wise, you will ask about it later. Is Crapmaster Nicodemus is constantly wandering around the workshop? Tending to new experiments and repairing broken equipment. Then he remembers manners. What else do you need, Ray Lynn? Redbeard told me to provide assistance to all loyal, true hands of Abaddon. This includes you. Is the equipment here to you, your liking? Well, I don't want to be an ungracious host, so I will simply say that I will struggle, though, through in these crude conditions. You didn't break too much when you cleared it all out for me. The most painful lack is of my assistants, who are all back in the Black Fortress. Why do you need assistance? They do any experiments that could be actually dangerous, so I am not put at risk. Isn't that hard on them? Oh, it's terrible. The results of failed experiments can be troubling to see and hear. Breaks the concentration. However, Avedon must use its limited resources in the most efficient of ways, so I must be protected. What are you trying to make now? Minor enchantments, mainly. To help Avedon soldiers on their raids. Not a full use of my skills, of course. But it is what is needed if we are to win this war. Anything I can get for you? Hmm, I think there is. Let me consider it, then ask me later. There is a chance I, that I might be able to help you and ease my boredom at the same time. Uh, tell me about your service to Abaddon. Oh my, that would be a long tale. I don't look it, but I have served the Black Fortress for over 50 years. He's right, he doesn't look it. <laughs> 50 years? Really? I have been unnaturally preserved by the substances I use in my work. However, if you were to cut me in half and count the rings, they would number over 70. He laughs heartily at this joke to save you the trouble. Why did you leave the Black Fortress? Hmm. Well, I don't want to lie to you, so I won't answer. Just be reassured that some of my skill and importance is here. I'd like to know what has been going on. Oh, I've met so many scared hands who have had that wish. I wish I could tell you more. I just won't. What else can you do for me? You can give me a chance to craft new artifacts for you. It would help us both. It would alleviate my crushing boredom and you would get a useful trinket of some sort. If you find any rare or odd crafting materials, bring them to me. I will utilize the late tint magic in those objects for your benefit. Can you craft any new items for me? Of course, if you have found rare and unique materials, all I would need is an item in question and 500 coins for my expenses. I don't have anything for you right now. Oh, I am disappointed. I always hope for, for, sorry. What were, what were we talking about again? Can I trade with you? I suppose in this remote land, I do need to do common bartering to get what I need. Let me see your wares. Nicodemus has a wide array of trinkets and baubles he has no use for. Okay, we could get this, some of the stuff, but I don't really have much money right now. I'd like to sell something. I don't need a trade. Oh, then. Sorry, what were we discussing? Let's go ahead and get the lock picks. I don't need anything else. Oh, alright. I'll go back to work. 
He wanders off struggling to remember what he was doing before he distracted him. Okay. So we met two hands, we met another hand, another familiar, both the two of them familiar faces, and we met another familiar face, Nicodemus again. I've spoken to Kalita and Nicodemus. Thank you, it has given me time to plan. I have a final piece of guidance for you. It may be urgent, you are not obligated to follow it, but I think it would be wise. She experimentally flexes the fingers on a ruined hand. We may be in battle very soon. You notice that the mysterious scroll from Abaddon is no longer on our desk. What is your final bit of guidance? Well, I have an actual mission for you. A proper mission out in the field of some delicacy, unlike the errands you have been doing. You need to go into Camaria. You must go to Vanatokstead to the north. I received a message from Tilla, the chief there. She's offering for sale information valuable to the pack. My advice is to go there, speak with her, and learn what you can. Extra advice? Do it quickly. I will have the gate out of the camp open for you. Why would a Camarian chief want to help the pack? Good question. The commander looks down at her ruined hand. Perhaps Chief Tilla is sick and tired of war. Perhaps she doesn't want to be crippled or killed. Perhaps she simply fears for her people. I'm not sure. Go find the answer. Tell me about Vanatokstead. One of Camarion's many keeps. A smaller one. The Khmerian armies have been more active to the west, and Vanatok said it has been happy to stay peaceful and safe from destruction. Chief Tilla is a cunning woman, and she has taken care to avoid her wrath. If she says she can help us, she is worth listening to. Can I get any assistance? I know that the hands that recently arrived are eager to fight. Suspiciously so. I'm sure that two of them will be willing to aid you. I doubt that all of them will want to leave, though. When you leave Camp Nightshade, you will be allowed to choose which hands will accompany you. When you return, they will head back to their campsite. But what do I do? You want my advice? I am a lowly soldier. I am a lowly soldier. I assumed you will go there. Speak with Tilla. Evaluate the system. Do whatever most helps the pack. More than that, I would not dare say. How do I get there? The gates out of the camp will be open for you. She marks the location on your map. The rose air should be free of foes. Chief Tilla is eager to not anger us. Walk up to the edges of the region you are in to reach the world map. You can then choose a new region to travel to. Commander Cerise has received orders from Avedon. Something is important is happening in the hostile lands of Camaria, and you need to investigate. You need to go to Vanatokstead to the north. Chief Tilla is the leader there. Though they are the enemy, she claims that she has information for you. Okay. Raise that, that, and that. Raise this. This and this. Alright, and obviously the canon choice in their respective games is to help out Kalita and Napoli. Because they can die in their respective uh, past appearances, but it's not canon if they do die. Yeah, you, can, it's canon to help them, clearly. But anyway, with that in mind, I can cover more of this later. But it's time for me to call it for this part of Let's Play, so I will save the game right here, and I'll see you all soon with the next part.